Hey everyone, this is Shreyas and welcome back to another video and this has been a very very requested video. The Tensor G3 in the Pixel 8 Pro is significantly or noticeably better than the Pixel 7 Pro running with the Tensor G2. Now main reason for doing this is that a lot of people are aware that there were issues in terms of you know the chipset heating up or the phone heating up overall in relatively light tasks as well and it had some other issues associated with as well. Yesterday I put out my quick unboxing of the Pixel 8 Pro. I got my hands early on it luckily. But if you haven't checked it out yet, definitely check it out in the link up over here and make sure to comment there and ask the questions that I asked for the full review as well. When I put in my physical SIM, it gives this particular message and it says that I have to get my SIM changed and I should get in touch with my carrier, which is kind of odd. I've never really faced it in any other device before. And this is an India retail unit, so I don't think that is an issue either. So all the testing, that's why to make it even, I have done it in airplane mode and with Wi-Fi on and connected to the same network. I have turned off adaptive brightness because both of them behave slightly differently and the brightness levels are not 100%. Although the Pixel 8 Pro uh, display gets way brighter. So I cranked it up both to 100% and tried to record 10-bit HDR video at 4K 30fps. Alright, so here is the Pixel 8 on the left. As you can see, this is a part of the house which kind of gets some sunlight. So right now, although it's pretty cloudy where I'm staying, and this is the Pixel 7 Pro. Let's see how they turn out after a while of recording video. Now, few settings that I have done. Unfortunately, my SIM hasn't transferred, my eSIM hasn't transferred yet. So I'm going to put both of them in airplane mode. Few other settings that I have done, I have manually cranked up the brightness levels to 100% for both the devices, turning off adaptive brightness. Also, you can clearly see how much brighter the 8 Pro is over here. So it will likely consume more battery and get warmer sooner. But let's see. The th other thing is that I have kept the resolution for both the phones at high. Um, so you can see full resolution for both of them. So let's go into the individual camera apps. Let's go to video mode and um, let's go to the ultra wide, for example. Or let's take the heavy sensors over here. The One X is the heaviest sensor on both of them technically. So let's do that. One more setting to check is we are at 4K 60 FPS. We don't have HDR over there. So what we can do is go for 10 bit recording instead turn on HDR and yeah let's hit record on both of them right now let's for the start of the experiment let's just check the temperatures very quickly this is at 36.4 as you can see that seems to be the highest on the device and the pixel 7 pro is at 36.5 36.6 Alright, so it's been 5 minutes of recording, a bit over it, 5.5 minutes. I've moved around with the phone and changed the focal lens of it also pretty equally among the between the two of them. Okay, the Pixel 7 Pro is definitely warmer in the hand than the Pixel 8 Pro. Okay, significantly warmer than the Pixel 8 Pro. So that's relatively good news. Now, just to be sure, let's measure the temperatures. So, Pixel 7 Pro on the glass back has a max temperature of 39 till now goes to 42.8 42.6 all right so it's 39 39.2 over here as per my thermometer it's been eight minutes of recording so let's just stop the recording real quick and see the battery stats all right for the next test i have been using instagram for a while so now let's check the temperature it's been kind of in the sunlight and has been running on wi-fi not 5g yet all right so on the left we have the 8 pro and on the right have the 7 pro oh my god okay the 7 pro definitely feels warmer and 8 pro is fine it's warm ever so slightly now let's check the temperatures 36, 36, 36.5 is the max I could see, 
yeah now on the 7 pro 38 all right so close to 40 degrees on the pixel 7 pro this is on wi-fi mind you so 39.6 on the pixel 7 pro this is on wi-fi running reels for a while it's been around 15 20 minutes and this is the result again looks promising for the tensor g3 as of now one more thing that i observed is on the pixel 8 pro which is the one over here if i go into play store and search something like geekbench it is not allowing me to install it i believe this is related to the embargo I'm not really sure how you can disable access to apps on a particular device through the Play Store. Again, it's Google's apps, Google's device, so maybe they can, but I'm not really sure. Same thing happens for 3D Mark Wildlife Stress Test. So I tried installing it, I can't. I can sideload and do it, but also to be completely fair, maybe I should run these tests after they have rolled out the final firmware. I'm not really sure if the creators who got it under embargo have a special firmware or not to test these out. Anyway, moving on, the CPU throttling test is something I could download. So let's get into that and start it. So again, both are going to be manually at 100% brightness. As you can see, both connected to the same Wi-Fi network both on airplane mode and also observe that the pixel 8 pro over here is at 86% again Sorry, if you can't see because of the brightness of the screen. It's at 86% So we'll also measure the drop in battery life and the 7 pro is at 81% So let's get started and all right. We are one minute in I'll decrease the brightness just for visibility right now And you can see that both have started throttling the g3 has th started throttling more but the question remains that which one gets warmer at the end of it because in terms of regular performance i don't see a problem with the g3 on the 8 pro as of now all right we are six minutes in so quick checkup over here let me decrease the brightness again for visibility and the graph looks a slightly better for the pixel 8 pro now it has kind of made a comeback i don't know how is it controlling temps better by throttling it earlier we'll have to see it's definitely warmer than the Pixel 8 Pro, but yes, um, we can have a quick temperature check. Sorry, that was the double tap maybe. So let's have a quick temperature check. Yeah, this place is like 39 degrees. The Pixel 8 Pro has a max of 38.4 degrees as I could tell for now. Let's again check back at the end of the test before you can see that it has started to dip a lot more for the Tensor G2. So this is the result of the throttling test on the right, the Pixel 8 Pro, the graph looks relatively better. It's not great in terms of a average CPU in fact, but yes, it is relatively better. Uh, over here, the Pixel 7 Pro looks a bit worse, but the numbers are a bit confusing over here. Again, maybe I don't completely understand or know how to read this, but it says that over here, the CPU throttle to 57%, which looks way worse on the graphs, but on the 8 Pro, which looks better, says that it only throttled to 55% instead. So that's it for this particular video, given that most of the apps uh, which are synthetic benchmarks cannot be seen or downloaded on the 8 Pro, that's a bummer. Also, I strongly believe there is an update pending over here because if you see, if I go to system and updates, you can see that it's stuck on the September patch, whereas the stable version of Android 14 on the Pixel 7 Pro has the October patch. I will be making my review currently with whatever update is here right now. If it comes well before the video is being recorded, then great. Otherwise, I'll make a follow-up video with whatever changes come in with the October patch or something later on as well. So that's been it for this particular video. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this helpful and I'll see you later with other videos and especially the comparison between the Pixel 8 Pro and the Pixel 7 Pro. So thank you for watching, catch you in the next one.